kids, Ms. Block here, and today we're going to continue our talk about surface processes by examining the factors that influence the rate of weathering. As always, you want to have your notes handy, something to write with, and your earth science reference tables. You can always pause and rewind or watch this video over again to review any concepts that you might be shaky about or not fully understand. You ready to go? Let's get started. So, as we discussed earlier, weathering is the process of breaking surface rocks down into smaller rocks or into sediments, as we said. And now we have to talk about how can we change or increase or decrease the amount of weathering that takes place on a rock. And there are four unique factors that we're going to examine right now that influence the rate of weathering. Okay, And rate is another way to say speed. We're also going to talk about some of the results of why weathering is important to us. But before we can get to that, let's talk about our four factors. These four factors include climate, particle size, composition of the rock, and exposure to the elements of that rock. Of these four, the most important one that we're going to look at is climate, and that's where we're going to start. Climate is the most influential factor for weathering rates. Now, if you recall, climate is the average temperature and precipitation of a region, or moisture content. So in areas that tend to be very hot and humid or hot and wet, hot and moist, we have a lot of chemical weathering. While in regions that are very cold and wet, we tend to have a lot of physical weathering. And it makes sense for these two to have that happen. Physical weathering needs that moisture because you have that frost action taking place. So you need that freeze-thaw cycle or that alternating of freezing and thawing above and below those temperatures. You'll also notice right here on the right, we have a chart that often shows up that shows us average yearly precipitation on the y-axis and average yearly temperature along the x. And when we're given a temperature or a precipitation amount, we can go to this chart and figure out what type of weathering would we expect to find, or how much weathering in some cases too. So for example, if we're someplace where it's 20 degrees Celsius and has an average yearly precipitation of 25 centimeters, you would tend to find very slight weathering in that region. Likewise, if this place happened to be 20 degrees Celsius and have an average yearly precipitation of, say, 175 centimeters, you would have very strong chemical weathering. So we have the combination of the two to help us figure out what type of weathering we would expect. Please note that if you have conditions that fall in this region above the dotted line, those are conditions that cannot occur on Earth. So you might want to go back and reread the question and make sure you read everything appropriately and properly. Another factor that influences the rate of weathering is particle size. This one I find a lot of kids have a lot of trouble grasping, so hopefully this will help you make some sense of it. The smaller the particle, the size of the sediment, the faster the substance will weather. The reason that we have more weathering is because we have an increase in the amount of surface area as the particle size decreases. So if you look right here in my next diagram, if we have this one cube, now we have the same volume of materials in each one of these three. However, more surface area is exposed. So if I look at this first cube right here, you'll see that each face or each part of the cube all right, is four square units. Two by two gives me four. The cube has six sides or six faces, and that gives me 20, a total you know, um, surface area of 24 square units. But if I were to make a few cuts, say three, one, two, and then cut it right in half there, I can now have eight individual cubes. Now they're smaller than my original cube, but I've now exposed more of it to the outside elements, and I have greater surface area. So each one of these is maybe one square unit with six faces or sides, but eight cubes gives me 48 square units. And I can cut them even smaller to have even greater surface area, in this case 96 square units. So something, say, like a, a, some clay or silt will have greater surface area to a similar volume of, say, a pebbles or a cobbles. If we were to put this in graphical terms, we can see as particle size increases, the weathering rate will decrease. So smaller particles will weather faster than larger particles. 
this is due to the surface area. So as the particle size increases, the surface area for that will increase as well. This is for similar volumes. We're not taking one piece of silt and comparing it to one cobble. This is if I had a similar volume of cobbles and a similar volume of silt. So composition is another factor we can look at. Some rocks are more resistant to weathering than others due to their mineral composition. So if we have something made of a very soft mineral, say talc or gypsum, that's going to weather a lot more than, say, if I had something made of quartz, which is very highly resistant, not likely to break down as easily. All right. Another factor in there would be exposure. And that is, in order to have weathering occur, the rocks have to be exposed to air, water, or actions of living things. So it needs to be exposed to the air, the atmosphere. It needs to be exposed to the water or the hydrosphere. It needs to be exposed to those animals. A rock that's deep underground isn't going to really break down that much as compared to those that are at the surface. So closer to the surface, the more weathering that's going to take place. Why do we care so much about weathering? Because the ultimate end result of weathering with time and some organic um, activity in there is soil and soil can really give us a lot of information we're going to talk more about soil later on in future ones and how soil most of the soils in New York State majority have been transported from one location to another all right and we'll talk about that in a further one but I just want you to be aware that soil is the end result of weathering that's the goal or idea we're looking at hopefully you found this helpful again Review it and watch it over if you were confused about anything. Hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.